All right, so we're getting back to work on Blue Steel. If you guys don't know who Blue Steel is, head over to Matt's Off Road Recovery, check out the truck. So since 2016, Blue Steel hasn't had any maintenance done. So we're completely giving Blue Steel a spa treatment, per se. We're fixing all the dents, we've painted it all, it looks good, we've got a new flatbed, we've installed that, taken it off, it's getting powder coated right now. But today, we're gonna work on the rear end. We're gonna put some airbags in it, so that when Matt's going down the road, it doesn't look like this. Yeah, so when he's hauling the world's largest off-road wrecker, he can't be squatted like this. It needs to be level, so he can prance around with pride. Once we put the flatbed on, the truck's gonna squat with no air. So what we're gonna do is after we install the bed, after we install the airbags, we're taking this thing to Best Deal Spring up in Payson. They're gonna custom make a set of leaf packs that's gonna put this truck at level ride height with no air in it. So that's gonna be cool, but that's not gonna be today. Today, we're working on airbags. Nobody needs these. Oh, that's cute. That's a controller unit. Thought it was a tankless system. I guess you thought wrong. And I think I did think wrong. Well, there's a tank. And he's gonna get onboard air. Oh, oh we also have an air horn for it. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Um, we're also gonna be putting a new radio in. We were hoping to do the installation of the bed today, but our flatbed is not done yet. So, all right, so that's all our stuff. We're gonna get blue steel in here. All right, Hillbilly's gonna jump in blue steel. We're gonna get it backed in and start doing these airbags. Four, four, stop! Perfect. Now we gotta try to figure out how to install bags. All right, so we've got some of the stuff divided out. We've got our brackets. They go on the, this is driver's side, right? We don't know yet. Oh, well, we've got them divided. So we're gonna figure out which is driver's side, which is passenger side. I believe this is driver's side. But what we'll do is we're gonna get everything all separated out to where we can start building this back together in the truck. Um, once we get to a point that they're almost installed, I'll start working on the radio. Um, we've got a cool radio that we're putting in this for Matt so that he can listen to the greatest tunes while cruising down the road. So he's got that all separated out. I'm separating out nuts and bolts and brackets and all that fun jazz. But anything that's not got two of, I'll have to look in the instructions. We're gonna start by getting these bump stops removed. The bump stops are these yellow things that actually hit right here. And the airbag is gonna go right in this area. So, gotta get those out of the way. There's one bump stop removed. I have to get the one off the other side. I decided to change from a wrench to the impact. And let's work. So there's bump, number, bump stop number two. Took off. Okay, so we got it jacked up and blocked up so that way the axle is free floating to give us more room to work. All right, give me the interest. So we have everything laid out. We have the back jacked up. I've got to figure out how this all goes. We are using instructions. Because we have to. Didn't you make a remark that only losers use instructions? Instructions are for losers. Shh. Check the instructions. Who do you work for, Steve? Well, I work for you. I'm, okay. just, I'm just asking. Who does Steve work for? Team Ryan. Nice. So I'm learning a good, valuable lesson. This fitting should have been installed before the plate. And now I just, I'm just teaching Hillbilly. So he does it right and I do it wrong. This all gets built like a jigsaw puzzle. It, it's not as bad when you actually look at the instructions. Not as scary. All right, so the way you line up this bracket is they've got this little U-shaped picky-do. And it goes right there. So we'll get the first bolt installed. And it goes through this hole. Right there. We'll put a washer and a lock nut on the back side. That goes right there. We'll get a... I'm going to get a ratchet and a socket and get that tight. And then this bracket right here actually lines perfectly up with this hole right here. Then we'll get a half inch bolt through it, which is right here. So we'll get this installed, and then this side of the bracket will be done. So Hillbilly's gonna work on his, we'll show you that, and then I will tighten this up. My bracket is shaped a lot different. Mine has a great big square hole. Put it in the same hole in the frame. You put a big fat washer through the bracket. That one goes in between the bracket and the frame. 
Don't want to tighten it up just yet. I don't want to put the airbag on before I tighten mine up because mine doesn't have a line up hole like Robbie's does. Mine's one bolt goes in. All right, so that's exactly where it needs to be. We got that tightened. A bracket's installed. Okay, I'm installing the bottom to the airbag. And then once I get the bottom installed, then I can go install the whole airbag onto my bracket and then get my bracket tight. And according to the instructions, I need one of these long ones right here. Flip it. And I'm going to use this hole and this hole like this. I'll get the size I need and get these tightened up. And then I can go install it. All right, so we got the brackets all figured out. We're just about ready to put this in. So Hillbilly's got his side, I've got my side, and we're gonna get these installed. And hopefully we've done things right. But I don't know. I'm gonna attempt to wiggle mine in. Uh, don't tell me we have to build it all once it's in. I'll be so sad. Oh, mine then. Missed him out. I'm getting it. That's where we're supposed to be. Should we let the jack down a little? I think we're in the right, the yeah. right area. Should do that for this. Okay, I got my airbag in. Now, well, I guess I can't tighten it because we don't got the bottom mounted down. Yeah, oh yes, I can because the bottom of this is stuck to the frame. And now I can tighten this up to sit where it needs to be. We're going to let the jack down and we're going to get everything all figured out for the lower portion of the airbag bracket so that it's stuck to the axle. Well, I almost got it. It almost, almost worked. Those are loose. So this was able to snug it up. But the new insider ratchet has a hole straight through the head. I'll have to show you guys sometime. Super awesome. Mine are all but tight. I'm just gonna grab the wrench and just do a couple of turns on these bottom ones and it's done. Well, because I held the stock on the uh, nut so it pushed the ratchet out the bottom so it tightened it up further. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, well my side's all finished up. So that's pretty much as far as I can get as far as as far as the airbags are. Um, Hillbilly can put the heat shield on that exhaust, but without the bed, we can't really run the lines, the wiring. We've got to figure out where everything's gonna go. And up here in this left front box is where we're gonna mount, is where we're gonna actually mount the compressor at. We're hoping to put the tank in there too, but that may not fit. So we might have to figure that out, but Hillbilly's gonna get that all finished up and then we're gonna start working on the radio. Yeah, what he said. It came with these ears just, it was just had to cut out, they were flat with of this. But you have to bend it to get some dead space between the exhaust and this heat shield or else it doesn't act like a heat shield. So now they'll sit off the exhaust and actually act like a heat shield. Now I can get that installed. Now single hose clamp ain't gonna go over this. So in the instructions, it says double up if needed. Well, it's needed. So it's getting doubled up. At first I was using my screwdriver and I decided to use the impact because that's a lot to do with the screwdriver. Quarter turn at a time. Time to install it. Make sure it's pushed up far enough and then hit it with the rattle gun. Just like that, he shows installed. I'm gonna lift it up, get rid of these jack stands and put it back on the ground. Now I'm getting all these blocks cleaned up, back where they go. So right now I'm just trying to figure out where these brackets go. They're to extend the e-brake cable down, so that way it's not rubbing up against the airbag mount. So the one bracket, you undo this bolt and it bolts into that exact hole and it puts it where this will drop down a little bit. Pull that one out, grab the bolts and the bracket. So this bracket goes right there, put the bolt back in. 
Or I'll get the back one installed. Just getting that all tightened up now. Those are now installed where they need to be. Found one more bracket that needs to be installed. So that way the brake cable doesn't sit there and vibrate. So this would have been a lot easier if we would have known that it needed to be in there before now. It's a pain in the butt. Two hours later, finally got it started. Now that's gonna hold the brake cable from rubbing. Now it's just gonna do this clip here so this wire ain't stretched so tight. And zip tie it with these. Cause that's what the instruction said to do. Now we can just zip tie it and now it's not tight. All right, so Hillbilly got the rest of his bracket done. Mine's finished. So we've got these airbags all finished up. Heat shield's on. Um, next, we're just gonna work on the radio. So Hillbilly's gonna turn this around. There's not enough space. Making it a lot harder than what it needs to be. Two yeah, hours no. later. Not no. I specialize in doing stupid stuff for a living. You can't turn that around, he says. Hold my apple juice. This is going to be fun to detail. Why don't you use the steamer? Yeah. Does steam is all. There's a bunch of like red sand everywhere in here. Yeah, like sand hollow. Yeah. This is called a Hell, a Hell Horse Performance Radio System. So we got this in the mail. So thank you, Hell Horse Performance, for for sponsoring Matt's truck, for sponsoring Blue Steel, and getting us a radio for him. Um, I'm not 100% sure what all this does, but I'm gonna read some instructions because I don't want to do it wrong. Um, but it looks like it's a SYNC 2-3 upgrade kit. Should be cool. This says that it's a plug and play system. Um, we just take out the old radio, we put in this new one that they've sent that's already pre-programmed. Um, we put in a couple modules, we put in some cables, we sprinkle some fairy dust on it, and voila, it should work. So this is kind of cool from the Hell, for Hell Horse Performance. They send you the, the head unit. It goes right into the truck. They send you this module. Not sure what it does, but it does something. We've got an antenna, we've got a bezel, and we've got a factory Ford. Oh, it's a USB switch. Well, that's cool. I'll show you guys the process, but I think Matt's gonna enjoy this new radio along with his new airbags. Yeah, the new and improved Blue Steel. Maybe it should be Blue Thunder after this. Okay, so the main damage is gonna be clean, clean, uh, start cleaning this out while Robbie's doing the radio. So I'm gonna start with taking these floor mats out, and those are very dirty. Probably end up steam cleaning, cleaning those outside. Dirty, dirty, dirty. The big rubber floor mat looks like the factory floor mats. Pull those out because they wouldn't need to be vacuumed, then steam cleaned. Blue Steel is going to get a complete makeover inside and out. So I've got to figure out how to install this. I'm going to hurry and watch a video on YouTube. What do you know? And I'm going to start pulling it out. And I'm going to grab a vacuum and start vacuuming because there's a lot of that to be done. I found these hot sauces in the door. I'm sorry, Matt, if you want hot sauce. Taste them. I'm not. You taste them. I can't do hot sauce. Well, then why would you tell her to do it? Matt, she if you want some more things. hot sauce, let me know. <laughs> so I'm just gonna steam off these WeatherTech mats, and then after I steam them all off and let them dry, I'm gonna put some dressing on them, and they'll be looking clean, hopefully. All right, so I've taken out these switches, power supply. We got this bezel coming out. There's dust everywhere. So obviously this truck's been used, abused, all the good stuff, like a truck should be. So it looks like this SYNC 2 is bolted in right here. The new SYNC 3 utilizes the same exact, yeah, uses the same exact bracket. So I'll pull this one out, take the brackets off, put it on the SYNC 3 and get it reinstalled. Um, but there is a GPS tracker that I've got to put in putting this USB up inside of here, which eliminates this old style one. This is a pretty cool upgrade. So it looks like this is just a unplug and pull out. I'm gonna get these brackets remounted on the SYNC 3. Steve's gonna go check in on the other guy, on Demery and Hillbilly and see what they're up to. Still just steam cleaning.
All right, so with this, the steamer isn't getting like all the dirt and all these little crevices all over this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Oberk quick detail and this brush. The steamer can get it, it just takes a lot longer. And this stuff smells so good. All right, so in this kit, if you're converting from the sink two to the sink three, it comes with a little jumper wire that actually connects to the factory adapter up inside here for the USB. So what we're doing is we're converting from these old style USB, there's a, there's a memory card and the three wires for an old TV. I don't even know what it's for. But anyway, we're just converting it to two USB ports because we're eliminating all that. So you push it into your bezel, put your adapter on, plug your wire into here, and voila, now you've got that installed, you push it back into place, and just like that, that's finished. So now you have a factory appearing two double USB port to charge up some phones. Next I'm gonna go, and I'm actually gonna put this GPS sensor up underneath the dash. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach my hand all the way back up under here, right where that headlight sensor is in the center of the dash, and I'm gonna use a rag and I'm gonna clean it. I would have liked some alcohol wipe, like some isopropyl alcohol or something, but I'm gonna settle for glass cleaner because this is all I've got. We'll let that sit and dry. And I'm gonna take this rag and I'm gonna shove it up under here. And that's a microfiber, so of course, it's gonna catch everything. Now the GPS sensor can actually sense through the plastic, so this is the ideal location for the sensor. I'm gonna take one side of the double-sided sticky pad off and stick it to the GPS sensor. Voila! And just like that, I'm gonna go up inside the dash, attach it, and we'll have our antenna in place. So this is gonna allow Matt to use navigation and whatever else a GPS antenna is for. Government tracking, you know, the usual stuff. And we're in business. So antenna is installed. It's starting to look like a brand new floor mat all over again. No matter how many times I clean this, there's still dirt coming from I don't know where. Everywhere. All right, so this is the Hell, Hell Horse Performance CarPlay adapter. So what it is, it's a little adapter so it's, your phone will connect to this hands-free. You plug the cable jumper in here and you plug it into the USB port here. And this just sits inside of here. Um, once we start the truck, we'll use all the prompts on the screen and we'll get it all to connect. So all I gotta do now is take my 54 prong connector, plug it in, ratchet style that so it locks. We've got another connector here. This is the factory USB that's installed. And then our new antenna, bada bing, bada boom. Got it all situated. Now this, Sink three just takes three bolts. We'll hurry and get these all cranked in. All right, now I've got this whole front panel. I'll clip all my connectors back in, make sure everything gets hooked up because this is what controls like everything inside the vehicle. Oh look, there's a Ford emblem. That must be the power supply for it. All right, so all you gotta do, little snap snappy. Just like such. Okay, what I'll do now is I'll get my bolts put back in and I've got a couple more switch panels and we'll see if this radio is gonna turn on. All right, done. So the last step, I'm gonna put some BRP, which is vinyl, rubber, and plastic. It's a protected protector. And it makes it look shiny and new. I only did half to show you guys. Believe it or not, detailing was my job before I used to film these two. She does a pretty phenomenal job cleaning. The proof is in the puddings. <laughs> How come yours don't look like that? Because I'm not done yet, I'm still working on it. All right, the moment of truth. 
And I'm not even gonna peel the plastic off. I'm gonna let Matt do that because that's that's the most special part about anything brand new. Well, it has noise. I think the navigation is faulting because we're inside the building. We better pull this out and check it. All right, we got it to work. Now it shows that we're in from Utah, so the GPS is working. Looks like we must have done something right. Okay, that's working. I'm gonna see if I can connect my phone and this radio installation will be done. Looks as good as new. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and I got over that. Look what's under the seat. A beautiful Matt's Off-Road Recovery rope and stock shackles. What do you know? We're getting every single thing out of the inside of this so that we can get... I'm going to pull the seat. We're going to use air blowers. We're going to use everything we can. We're going to detail blue steel like you've never seen it before. So I've been waiting to try out my new Milwaukee pack out socket. I'm gonna grab these. They're in they're in an actual pack out in a hard pack. We're gonna get this all cut open and see how they do. Pop those two out. Alright, so I've got the rear tray all undone. I'm gonna take it out to them so they can start cleaning it. Then we're gonna get this back seat all removed. Get the front seats and the center console removed and then start cleaning this carpet. Got it. We got the seat belt bolts out. Ugh, what a process. I got one bolt out. I'll hurry and pull the other ones out and this seat will be ready to come out. Just finishing up the carpet floor mats. All right, so as soon as you're done with that, come help me pull the seat out. Okay. <laughs> well, that happened. All right. Now we can get the seat all detailed. We can get to all the carpet. Come check this out. There's a lot of stuff in the back seat. Someone likes being m and m Hey, this is what happens on road trips. You get stuff. You get <laughs> stuff places. So Billy's gonna get that seat all discombobulated. And I'm gonna work on getting the front seats out now. All right, the front seats are all unbolted. Now we gotta finagle them out. I lean, I like to lay them back. That way I can get all the way down inside the crevices when we clean them. Driver's seat's coming out. Hey, Robbie. Hmm? Have you ever, till this time, pulled the vehicle this apart this far to clean it? Actually, multiple times. Oh, really? I used to always take seats out. I like this. I'm weird, I like to get it spotless. You wanna do my truck next? Nope. Nope, nope, I don't. I don't like it that much. Got the center console all unbolted. We're gonna pop this sucker out. This interior, well, interior will almost be done. Then we're gonna work on getting sill plates off. That's the sill plates that say Super Duty where you get in. Then we'll be able to get this thing all cleaned really, really good. Now we're gonna be pulling off the sill plates. And these ones are just held in with clips, pressure clips. That's the thing with what they're called. You push down and they walk in. The older models were held in with screws, push style clips, and they just lock it, lock in. So there's one, last one. Take them outside and steam, get them all steam cleaned up real nice. Little Adley's here. Hi, sweetie. Hi. What are you doing? Why did the M and M go to school? Why did the M and M go to school? To learn? No, because he wanted to be a smarty. Because the M and M wanted to be a smarty? Yeah. That's funny, sweetheart. Got any more jokes? Yeah. Okay, tell hillbilly one. Hillbilly. What? I got a joke for you. You got a joke for me? Yeah. Let's hear it. What does a dinosaur say when we jump out of the closet? Boo. No. Supplies. Supplies? <laughs> no, these look nice. They're nice and white, aren't they? You guys hear that? Hillbillies. Adley says that Hillbillies new teeth are nice. So it's the end of the day. Adley's came and told some jokes. We're tired, so 
We'll be back tomorrow to finish up this detail. It is tomorrow. We're back to detailing the truck this morning. Green, uh, blue steel. Get it all cleaned up. Now I'm VRPing it. Look how new that looks. If I remember right, Joe, the VRP puts moisture back into the, like the plastics and vinyls, right? Yeah, it's like putting lotion on your skin. It protects from the sun and all that good stuff too. What about protects from that? Well, well I don't know if you can task, protect uh, I, I think it'll do good. So first off, start off with all the plastics and all the rails, get all the dirt off with the steamer, kind of get all that nice and good like I have here. And then after that, head over to Camilo where he has the leather cleaner and then spray on the leather cleaner, brush it off with a good brush, and then wipe it off, and that'll get it ready for the conditioner. Sounds like a lot. Yeah, but that's how you do it good, so. Well, that's why we, well, that's why Robbie pays you the big bucks to That's do right. Let's get it all scrubbed up nice. Joe's got a smoother technique than yours. Well, I don't clean cars on a daily basis like him. So he knows the smoother technique. Now that we got the seat cleaned, I am conditioning the leather, which put moisture back into it. And it smells like a brand new leather shop. Or not a brand new leather shop, but done. a warehouse full of brand new leather. So is this one done now? Yeah, this one's all done. It's nice and clean, ready to go in the truck. Looks like new. Still just scrubbing seats. Leather cleaner. These seats are about done. Just got one more to do. Joe got one more to do. Getting it all dried up and then getting the leather conditioner on. No, leather scrub. Oh, I just steam cleaned it. And I was gonna, yeah, I knew that. Hey, how good do you think this work if we stuck it in a drill? <laughs> now it's time to put on the stuff that makes it go pop. Now I'm just scrubbing the covers for the sides of the back seat where the bolts are, so that way they're done. All right, so next up, we're gonna pull the truck out. We're gonna pressure wash all the door jams, get all that mud out. That way we're not tracking dirt in while we're cleaning, so. Getting all the doors open, so that way Joe can pressure wash the jam. I don't wanna do it, because I'd make a bigger mess, and that way Robbie don't get mad at me, he gets mad at Joe for a bigger mess. I love that plan. Okay, we got the door jams, all the sand and buildup and stuff uh, sprayed off. So now Joe's going to pull it back in. So Robbie can start doing the carpet cleaning. Now we're going to clean the doors. First, we're going to start off by steaming, just getting all the big chunks of dirt out. And then we'll follow it up by bringing uh, around a brush and just putting some cleaner on, some brush, and then making it look all nice and pretty. So. Yeah, so you want to clean these first because if we clean the carpet first and then they clean these, we'd get dirt all over the carpet again. It'd be kind of pointless. So we're going to do these doors first and then we'll do the carpet after. You scrub the door panels and then I'll wipe it off and it'll look good as new. All right, so we've, we've been going hard on the detail today. We've got everybody over here helping. 
Um, I'm gonna get the carpet all cleaned up. So first we're gonna start by vacuuming it and then we're gonna do some extracting and some steaming and everything else. All right, so we went ahead and got the carpet all pre-vacuumed. Now I'm gonna go through and steam it. There's a few spots that wouldn't vacuum up and there's some candy that's embedded into the carpet. I'm gonna show you what the steamer will do. Um, I'll go through, get it all steamed, and then we're gonna extract it. So, got a few more steps on the carpet, but this carpet will look awesome when we're done. You can actually see how much more the steamer is getting out of this carpet that was embedded down in it. You can see the difference in what the steamer does versus just vacuuming. So I'm gonna finish up going through, steaming the whole inside, and then we're gonna get the extractor out and get this carpet perfect. All right, so as you can see, I've gone through and I've gotten most of everything extracted. There is some more stuff on the carpet, but it's not embedded inside the carpet anymore. Now, the awesome thing about this steamer, I'm gonna show you how quickly it'll get a Jolly Rancher out of carpet. So this embedded, anybody that's ever detailed you know how hard it is to get a Jolly Rancher out of carpet. But with the steamer, check this out. Look at that. Right there, comes right out. Now I'll finish getting it. Just like that. No chemicals, no nothing. There's no more sticky in that carpet. That Jolly Rancher is gone. We're gonna finish this up, go through, steam the rest of it, and then we're gonna extract it. Hey, Robbie, I don't think we can give this back to Matt. Why? Because he's not gonna recognize this, so the dog don't think it's his. I know, it's not gonna be a, just a work truck anymore, it's gonna be a new of you. As you can see, Robbie and the crew got everything inside Matt's truck sparkling clean. Cleaner than it's ever been before. Hillbilly started the reassembly process by putting the seat back into the cab of the truck. He snapped the seats back in place, then bolted them to the floor. We lost our GoPro audio during this section. I guess one of the guys forgot to plug in the microphone and Robbie wasn't available to do a voiceover. Which is why Still DOWG is narrating this portion of the video. Now Hillbilly is installing the top portion of the back seat. And here he is snapping in those bolt cover things. Just like that, the back seat is back in place. Here Hillbilly is explaining something about the seat belt. I'm not sure what he's saying exactly, but it was probably important. Now he's installing the seat belt. I'm pretty sure. Now he's putting back in the big plastic thing they keep the recovery rope in. Wow, that looks really good. Now it's time to install the center front seat and the passenger seat now. He's got to line up the bow holes. Now he's checking to make sure all the electronics in the passenger seat work properly. They work. Great job, Hillbilly. It's time to install the most important seat of all. The seat that holds the off-road recovery legend himself. Matt's seat is ready to be installed. He's gonna bolt it in. He's installing the electronics. Now Hillbilly is going to reinstall the heavy-duty seal plates back onto the truck. And magically after all this work, the GoPro audio comes back on. Got all the seal, seal plates put back in. And they look new. Okay, so now I'm just installing the floor mats. I already got the back carpet ones installed. You can't see them because they're black, but right there, one there, and one there. So now I'm gonna put in the WeatherTech floor mat. Got the WeatherTech all installed. This truck's looking really fresh inside. So we made it to Kevin at Powder Stream Cody. We're actually picking up the bumpers and a couple of things for a secret project. I can't talk to you guys about that. So we're gonna be coming back up to get the bed next week. And this is what he managed to color off. Check this out. You guys don't think this guy's freaking amazing. That's good enough that you can't even tell this is powder coat. This is fake. So you're a wizard, Kevin. Well, we took us a long time, but we got pretty close. Glad that they're not. 
just black. This is yeah. awesome. Yeah, okay. We don't do just black. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, Dude, that's not that bad, bad at all. At all. It looks no. like a little. This is old. We'll just say it's. This is sun faded. That's yeah. not. <laughs> I think it looks this awesome. Looks sweet. I can't wait this to see the time to stand Oh yeah, it'll, <laughs> yeah, first recovery will match. Yeah. All right, so we just left powder extreme coatings. Kevin did a phenomenal job on the bumper. Hefe approves, he's super excited about it. I cannot wait to show you guys the bed next week. So as always, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, go check out that one.